questions about your MTHFR gene mutation. Uh, maybe you're seeing that some of these things are myths or you have questions about what supplements you should be taking, uh, whether you should be taking glutathione or B12, etc. Um, my name is Dr. Taranella and in this video I'm going to help you understand what some of the myths and what some of the truths are about MTHFR gene mutation and what you can do to have a more concrete understanding and get into uh, what you need for your personal health to balance out how your body is working when you have MTHFR gene mutation. So if this interests you, keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. So the first MTHF, MTHFR gene mutation myth that I wanted to discuss is, you know, people get the idea that if you have MTHFR, then, you know, you definitely have to do something about it. Uh, you have to take a supplement or do something to fix it. Um, and it really depends on which part of the gene is altered. And so I wanted to go into that a little bit, uh, you know, to make sure you understand. Just because, you know, you got, got a report that says you have MTHFR doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to impact your health. There are two spots along the MTHFR gene that tend to alter the outcome of the protein that is made from that gene. So um, when you have your uh, double helix, the uh, rungs of the ladder kind of uh, of the double helix um, fit together by the nucleotide base pairs. And the nucleotide base pairs are your um, A's, T's, C's, and G's. And they fit together uh, electromagnetically like this. So one can be changed uh, and replaced with a different one. So a C can be replaced with a G, but there's a wild type or a uh, type that is common or, or gonna, gonna work the best we can say, and that's the wild type. That gene, the MTHFR gene, may be like, uh, I don't have this memorized, but it may be like uh, a thousand base pairs long. So a thousand of these uh, double helixes uh, long. And along that, that gene, there's just two spots that are correlated with changing the protein outcome. And you can have one change or two changes. So they both can be flipped or um, replace or just one of them can be. So um, so without getting into too much nuance here, um, the, 12, the A1298C and the uh, C677T are the two uh, spots that we're referring to. The 1298C is less uh, associated with uh, significant change and the C677T has more significant impact on the protein outcome. Um, and there's different combinations that you can have. So you can have one of the 1298C and that's not very significant. But if you have two, then it can be. Um, if you have one of the of the uh, C677T, um, that also can be significant, but not always. If you have two of this C677T, that will definitely be uh, significant. You know, and you can, so you can have different combinations of them. So, you know, depending on what you have, you, this may not be a very big problem for you. So in summary, myth number one is, you know, if you have an MTHFR gene mutation, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to take some kind of supplement or do something to fix it. Really depends on which uh, spot along the gene you have altered. So the second MTHFR gene mutation myth that I wanted to talk about is if you have MTHFR gene alteration, then you your health is compromised in some way. So this is kind of a similar trend uh, to the first one, but uh, wanted to kind of separate these out because, you know, your health is a... a expression it's a living thing it's not static and genes are static so they don't you know you can uh, turn 
genes on and turn genes off. Uh, but the uh, when we're looking at your MTHFR status, the, you know that's not going to change over time. But what does change is your uh, phenotypic expression, which is your health. And so we're asking this question: Is your health compromised? That's really a you know a question of what's currently going on with your body. So um, in any of the realm of MTHFR gene alterations, you may be perfectly healthy, like there's no uh, symptoms that you have, you're, you know, you're not having any problems with depression or, you know, mood alterations or even having any fatigue. And then, you know, there may not be any physical signs or symptoms that tell us, or, or any physical signs that tell us that there's a problem. So you may, your blood work may be perfectly normal. Um, does that, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't do anything about it if you have, you know, uh, like the C677T homozygous, but it does mean that you know, possibly it's not as important for you. Just emphasize the fact that uh, just because you have an MTHFR gene alteration does not mean your health is somehow compromised. It does mean that you, you know, that part of your, the way your body works is susceptible to being compromised. And so you may have to be more aware of it. It's similar to, you know, if you have a family history of of heart disease, you know, you may want to watch your cholesterol a little closer or blood pressure closer, knowing that you have the MTHFR gene alteration and, and question one, you know, or myth number one, you know, uh, do you have to fix it or do something about it, take a supplement? Well, that will depend both on what your health, what current health issues you're having, and also, you know, which kind of alteration you have in combination. Those two things sort of inform what we do about it. Third myth that I wanted to look at, the third MTHFR gene mutation myth that I wanted to discuss is this idea of methylation. So if you have MTHFR, uh, you don't methylate or um, but better way to say that would be you don't methylate well. And it really, again, depends on point number one, which gene alteration in your MTHFR uh, enzyme you actually have. You know, so in some senses that can be true that you're not gonna methylate well. And methylation process is basically the act of adding a methyl group, which is a carbon with three hydrogens onto another molecule, which can either turn something on, uh, make it more active, or make it less active or inactive in your body. This methylation process can happen through utilization of the MTHFR enzyme and methylfolate, but there are alternative pathways that can allow for the same thing to happen. Um, and there's also, you, you can you can consume these methyl donors in the form of food as well. So um, methionine, for instance, is an amino acid that is uh, basically, uh, you know, has methyl groups on it already. And these can be used in your body to create SAMI. Um, there's also alternative pathways that bypass MTHFR and uh, the methionine synthase enzyme altogether to create uh, methionine uh, and recycle homocysteine. So just because you have MTHFR gene mutation does not mean you don't methylate well, but it could mean that depending on what's going on in your body. It could also, you know, when you have MTHFR gene mutation and other things going on with your health, it could, you know, sometimes those, the uh, uh, cascade of uh, methyl transferases, which is what does most of the methylation can be slowed down or compromised too. But the MTHFR gene mutation itself um, doesn't turn those off. Uh, it slows down the production of the methyl donors, uh, especially when you have a more significant MTHFR gene alteration. So in summary, uh, myth number three is uh, you know, if I have MTHFR gene mutation, then I don't methylate well. And the answer is that can be true in, in some instances, but most of the time there are alternative ways that you can actually uh, methylate and uh, get methyl donors uh, from food and other sources to, you know, create the optimal balance in your body. So it really depends on what your gene uh, state is and your uh, phenotype is and then uh, what, your, what your diet and other things are. So the fourth MTHFR gene mutation myth that I want to talk about is if I have MTHFR, then I have to take methylfolate. And just like, you know, some of these other myths, it's really going to depend on which gene alteration you have and what your current health status is. So not everyone has to take methylfolate. I have many patients that have MTHFR gene alterations that don't take it. We use other methyl donors or uh, in some instances, it's just not relevant for them. And part of that is going to be uh, determined by how you respond to methylfolate supplementation, especially if you're, you know, you're 
you know, have chronic digestive things and chronic uh, other health things, you may not be able to take the methylfolate and you may have to use these other pathways to uh, supplement your body with these uh, nutrients uh, to balance out your relative uh, status in your body. And these things can be measured through labs. You know, we discussed in other videos, uh, you, you can look at homocysteine and things like this to determine whether or not you need uh, more of these methyl donors. Sometimes you have to do more advanced tests like the SAMHSA ratio, etc. But just, you know, to point out that, you know, your health status and the actual MTHFR gene mutation that you have will kind of determine, you know, how, you know, whether or not you need to take methylfolate. The other thing is there's other gene alterations that may uh, mean you need other nutrients to kind of balance out the methylfolate when you take it. So some people don't do as well when they have with the methylfolate when they have like COMT or other transsulfuration uh, mutations, you know, you may have to be a little more uh, cautious with your dosing of methylfolate, even if you do have this significant MTHFR gene alteration. So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, you got to look at the actual gene mutation, what you know, some of the labs in your current health say about uh, what's going on in your body, and then, you know, possibly look at some of the other gene alterations, uh, other SNPs that could be affecting your response to methylfolate. So the fifth and possibly the one that you're most interested in uh, for MTHFR gene mutation myths is uh, that MTHFR gene mutation doesn't matter. You shouldn't worry about it, forget about it, you know, just don't even think about it. Um, uh, that's a myth. Uh, there are plenty of health-related things that can be affected by having MTHFR, and the most, and, and there's plenty of data to support this as well. Um, now, that doesn't mean that everyone that has, you know, a slight alteration or even a major alteration is going to have a health compromise because of this, but it should be something that you know. It, it, you should be aware of uh, the possible symptoms that can come up with this uh, when you do have it. So most notably, uh, clotting disorders and cardiovascular related issues, and then also mental health uh, related issues, um, and, and possibly to neurological. So that does cover a lot of, you know, areas broadly, but um, I would say the most common that I see is related to mental, mental health and energy like fatigue. So, you know, there's plenty of research on this to support these claims that I'm saying, but I will put a more recent, uh, I think it was a review, so it kind of brings a lot of research together um, and uh, looks at different uh, studies that were done and correlates it to the MTHFR and looks at different variations of MTHFR. So um, so just in summary, MTH, when you have MTHFR, it can mean that your you know, health is compromised. In some ways, you really have to pay attention to you know, specific health issues uh, and be aware that these things can come up and it also depends on which alteration you actually have. And if you're interested to learn more about that, you can, uh, there'll be a link in the description for that research study. Okay, so this is a bonus MTHFR gene mutation myth. It's something that came up uh, in one of my visits uh, recently. Um, patient said, well, I have that gene alteration, gene mutation, that means I need to take more B12. The thing is, most commonly people are referring to the MTHFR, and in some instances you, it could, you could use B12 to help it along a little bit, but it's really methylfolate that's going to help MTHFR or riboflavin. Um, if you're, you, you, you know, B12, there's specific gene alterations that can help, uh, that can be compromised where you need more B12. Um, and in some cases, yeah, if you're, you know, supplementing with methylfolate and doing things for MTHFR, you may need B12 too, but you wouldn't uh, just take B12 in most cases because you have MTHFR. Same thing, you know, and so sometimes people just get a list of, uh, you know, okay, these are the things you need to take if you have MTHFR. You need to take uh, glutathione and cysteine and uh, liver support and, uh, you know, probiotics and different things like that and B12. Uh, yes, those can be relatively true in certain individuals, uh, but you, you really need to look at what your health issues are and what your genetics are and kind of customize that for uh, what's going on with you. So the myth being that, you know, you, you need to take 
everyone should take X, Y, and Z if you have MTHFR. And that's not necessarily true. It's really about the customization and understanding how your body responds to these different nutrients and how uh, your uh, blood markers change and how you feel when you make these changes. So keep that in mind. Uh, just because you have MTHFR doesn't mean you need to take a huge list of supplements. You may only need to take the methylfolate and it may only need to be periodically. Um, and uh, sometimes you do have to take, you know, four or five or even more different supplements temporarily and then that you know that can change over time as your body changes and and you come into more uh, balance with all your nutrients all right so hopefully that gives you a better understanding of some of the mthfr gene mutation myths that exist and gives you a, a more concrete and um actionable uh, way of approaching MTHFR gene mutations. If you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.